Team Spirit were not supposed to be a TI. Bane of your existence. A team of rookies isn't supposed to be in the grand finals of Dota's biggest tournament. You were expecting fire. The International is one of the most prestigious tournaments in esports, where history has been made time and time again. This has only begun. But at TI-10, these Russian underdogs did more than just make history. They did the impossible. They're ready to close it this time. Only two left. Can they stop a PSG? I don't think they can. Gigi's got it. It's over. Gigi. It's over. Gigi. They've got it. Ladies and gentlemen, your international champions team spirit. Find it by horn in. <laughs> All right, folks, before we get into Team Spirit's incredible story, I just wanna make sure that you're all subbed to the channel. So please, if you haven't done it already, hit that sub button and turn on notifications. It really does help. Anyway, if you've ever watched The International, you've seen plenty of Cinderella stories. From historic upsets to full-blown miracle runs, TI is one of the most unpredictable tournaments in esports. But Team Spirit's run at TI-10 was something special, even by TI standards. Why? Well, for starters, they shouldn't have even been a TI to begin with. After putting up decent showings at ESL1 Germany, Dota Summit 13, and Epic League, their then unsigned stack, known as Yellow Submarine, was picked up by Team Spirit while most orgs were leaving Dota due to financial stresses created by COVID. We want to return to the big game. I have a good roster. Led by their manager, Corbin, Spirit's roster was basically a grab bag of random underdog players. They were a way for a mid-sized org in a long-suffering region to take a calculated, cost-effective risk. Всем привет, с вами Team Spirit, прямиком с буткемпа в Москве. So, who were Spirit? Well, for the most part, nobody. At least, nobody of note. Like I said, they were mostly hungry, untested up-and-comers. The first was Toronto Tokyo, and yes, that's really his name, an aspiring mathematician who dropped out of Moscow State University to pursue a career in professional Dota. Next, you had Yotoro, a 17-year-old carry who played well beyond his years, and Collapse, a mechanically gifted offlaner who, despite his limited hero pool, never miscast a spell. This was a new generation of CIS talent who were desperate to test their mettle on the big stage. Of course, in order to do that, they'd need leadership, direction, and some sort of veteran presence. And that's where the only member of this roster that your average Dota fan had heard of comes into play. The drafter and fifth position support, Miposhka. As one of the best captains CIS Dota had ever seen, Miposhka circled in and around the top tier of competitive play for years as the leader of Team Empire. They're waiting to try to turn this. He's got Black Hole ready. He's gonna pop. There oh. is Black Hole on the three. Can they get anything else with this? They got the wand on the Omni Slash. Back keep coming in. Crystal, they've lost three. Will they lose more? No Tails in trouble. His arm it will not save him. Miracle will try to TP out, but he won't make it. An Empire turn it into a five-man wipe. What a Black Hole for me, Posh. You've got to be freaking kidding me. His claim to fame was securing a top eight finish at his first ever international in 2017 by eliminating evil geniuses, while his team played with a stand-in. 2700, they find the wipe in as well. It looks over for EG and it is over. Team Empire will 2-0 out the former TI champions. That said, Spirit still needed a coach. So they enlisted the services of an even more storied veteran, one who'd been around CIS Dota since the very beginning. Silent. But Universe has no way out. This might be it right now. They've lost three. GG, GG is the call. Team Empire claim the land finals for the join of the MLG Pro League. So with all this promising talent, why did I say that Spirit shouldn't have even been a TI? Because they were literally one map away from never even qualifying to begin with. You see, the easiest way for rosters to get into TI is to earn enough points in the Dota Pro circuit to get a direct invite. Unfortunately, Spirit season got off to a rough start. They missed the Singapore Major, and from there, things looked bleak. Там нас сразу не задалось, не задалось. Все, мы то начали тоже кавешки играть, начали все вообще проигрывать без шансов. Ничего толком не получалось. Там какие-то игры вообще в сухую, какие-то пытались бороться, но все равно проигрывали. И чувствовалось, что, блин, что-то немного идет не так. 
Thankfully, Spirit made it to the Animager in June with Mira, their new explosive fourth position support. In come the shackles, Mira holds him in place, and the Serpent Ward's pummeling EG into the ground. Arteezy, he's left here, he's on an island. There's no one to save the teddy bear. No picnic for you, and an absolute slaughter. They just don't have enough damage, GG. It's GG. over. Calling it. The roster could synergize and show tons of promise, but they were in desperate need of some confidence. And at the Animager, they found that spark. There's a Faith Beyond. Last ditch effort with the Manta side. That's a lot of damage. Can they kill him? They do, but he does have buyback. We'll try to get back in as fast as he, as he can as the Soulbind is onto two. Faith Beyond is going to tumble. So that's three dead, five versus two. PSG LGD only left with a couple supports, and they're going to call it GG. What a game from Team Spirit. Then collapse. There's the oh, Horn Toss gosh. into the Skewer S4. He will not have buyback for this, and yeah, he drops 70 seconds on the deck, and Team Spirit look to be taking this in a Gaben-level shellacking, I have to say, Cinder, and this is a mega stomp. There is the RP, not even getting the Warlock ult off. Does have buyback, but it matters not. GG, Alliance is eliminated, and Team Spirit shall move on. Unfortunately, Spirit got knocked out in the second round of the lower bracket. Their season was over. They had no chance of getting a direct invite to TI. Their only hope was to win the CIS regional qualifier. It was a close call, but Spirit managed to eke it out in a five map grand final. Oh, the stun, it catches oh, that and there's the call. What a connection, Yutaro jumps in. Never a chance, Team Spirit makes the play, finds the kill, they're going to TI, Trent, and they're gonna be very happy about it indeed. Going into TI itself, Spirit were a bit of an unknown quantity. Sure, they could be explosive, but they were also extremely young and inexperienced. People had almost no idea what to expect of them, especially since they were apparently one of several smaller rosters that weren't even given suitable space to play. И групповые игры, групповые стадии будут играться с этого практис рума. Вы знаете еще что самое интересное, друзья мои? Самое интересное то, что у других команд практис румы лучше. Подобного практис рума подобного объема достались командам последним шести командам по DPC point. Да праки, праки. Да пока не добрались до праков. Проблема с интернетом. Там была странная ситуация, когда зашел мужик такой, спрашивает, интернет works? Я ему такой, абсолютно не works. Он такой, ок. После секунд 10 на нас посмотрел, я такой, что-то как-то почувствовал давление, сказал ему, ну, может, можешь идти работать, типа. Он такой, ок, и ушел. Вот, потом он к нам вернулся, опять спросил, интернет works? Мы такие, нет, до сих пор не works. Он опять ушел. Вот, пока что третий раз не приходил еще. Но я думаю, придет. The CIS region has always been a Dota powerhouse. Na'Vi won the first TI, and for years after, Virtus Pro always looked like one of the best teams in the world heading into the tournament. And yet, they always choked. Needless to say, hopes weren't high for a CIS roster made up of almost entirely rookies. Spirit started the group stage by losing three of their first four matches. It looked like they were crumbling as if their unlikely run would end right there. And there is no buyback on that man. Collapse, he's trying to TP out, but indeed the cookie puts a stop to the escape. Collapse is gone. So is Mira, G -G. and they'll call it oh GG. Meanwhile, the Tiny is still dealing with this Razor. Collapse is receiving no help from his supports whatsoever because they are being demolished and countered by the cores of PSG LGD. Yutaro gets out. Razor gets out, Trance Tokyo gets out, but they call GG, it's just over. And they have so Close. much damage, Collapse goes down, they don't manage to finally finish off. Yatoro, he gets taken out! And they'll chase after the Rubik, the GG gets called, Spirit has had enough. We showed not the best game in our best game. We don't know what it's related to, it's possible with some confusion, maybe with some confusion, maybe with the fact that we just don't think about it. I'm confident that we can show ourselves вообще в другом, абсолютно другом амплуа и с другой стороны. Jump forward, no BKB available. Yang trying to hang on to anybody. Gets bashed by Collapse. GG is gonna be called. Yutara might have gone for it a little bit too much before, but now it's just the right amount. The Ravage comes in, but it does not delay. It does not stall. It will not end this nightmare for Fnatic. They had this game, but now they're going to lose it to Team Spirits. Does get into that inverse form. A Winter's Curse, though. Three heroes surrounding Chris Luck. Nullified again. The Necro just not accomplishing anything. And Beast Coast called call GG. It. 
Not a chance in that game. Incredibly one-sided. Team Spirit taking the 2-0 victory over BC. The CIS squad managed to win every match for the rest of groups, narrowly making it into the upper bracket. It was exactly the chance they needed to make a deep run. But then, they threw it all away. GG as IG take game three in a very convincing fashion. That means that they will be top six guaranteed now, Cinderin. We don't know who they're going to play, obviously, since this is the first upper bracket best of three. But Team Spirit, they're still alive. That's the important yeah. thing for them. If Spirit wanted to win the tournament, they would need to make a truly historic lower bracket run. An anime power-up for the ages. They'd need to beat everyone with no safety net. Team Spirit, no more messing around from them as they focus down the throne. One by one by one, death will die, and more to follow as Team Spirit is gonna close this one out. Oh, gee, there's nobody left alive. It's only no tail. There's nothing left, and GG is called. Team Spirit end the game, taking down OG. What a Cinderella story here on the main stage. In there up to 9 for 9 4. He stands no chance at all. And the Luna will fall. King Slayer's well. GG is called as Team Spirit knock VP out of the competition. A Spirit, they're looking to close it up. JT's going to go in for one last try with the jump in for Collapse. Straight over on to Evo. Toronto to go to one. GG is called. Spirit knock OG out of the competition. That's a huge curse on the three heroes as Team Secret get RP from Collapse. And the right clicks are there from Yotaro. Triple oh kill for him. Making an ultra kill. Will he get another Rampage at TI-10? Absolutely, Yotaro does it again, Cinderin. It's and over. they're going to call GG. The underdog story is still alive. Team Spirit move on to the Grand Final. Somehow, Spirit had clawed their way through every juggernaut in the tournament. And now, they were in a TI Grand Final. There was only one opponent left. PSG LGD, the Chinese superpower, who steamrolled their way through groups and the upper bracket and were all but guaranteed to hoist the Aegis of Champions. But then, Spirit started playing. BKB from Arme, he's trying to stay on target, but Yotoro's able to sink their way back to safety. And now he's ready to go back in. The song ends, Toronto Tokyo, BKB up, jump over with the remnant, grabs back the answer, Arme disappears in a matter of seconds. GQ to fall as well. GG is called, and my goodness, what a buttery smooth start to the Grand Finals here for Team Spirit. Another huge win, Team Spirit, they won't be denied, the fourth toss catches on the ZQ, oh, and Yaro just slaughter. The way they play these fights, they're so in sync with one another, GG oh. is called, they call it a Cinderella story, well if the shoe fits, wear it, they oh, look good. Going into Game 3, it seemed like Spirit stunned their opponents into submission. But this was LGD. They weren't going down without a fight. It's just the three of the Maples coming down, oh man! He needs help! He's in the mountain and it is in his own! Oh, he was attempted with the Yules in there to stop the play! Oh man, he'll be getting out of this mountain alive! GG is called! And PSG LGD will take this Game 3! Turns now onto the Ancient Haunt out afterwards. Where's the fight? I'm not seeing it. Going deathless so far. They turn now onto Y. Just grips to the side. Oh, oh the catch on the collapse. Y's not dying. Nobody's dying. They all fall again as GG Ooh. is called 23 to 3. A statement from LGD. Heading into the fifth and final game, Spirit looked like they were done. It seemed like their miracle run momentum was spent and LGD was finally on their way to claiming the Aegis. But somehow, Spirit brought it back. Again. Link out to Arm Collapse, he's got his eyes on him. Still no nothing to say or why for 50 seconds. Arm is alone. He's gone in alone, that was a risky move. He's got the back of a Jin Q. But Spirit, they're gonna chase on. Slight chase, Arma, he's oh, gone. They're ready to close it this time. Only two left. 
Can they stop a PSG Algini? I don't think they can. GQ's got it over. It's GG. It's over. GG. They've got it. They have got it. Team spirit. Despite the realization that they were about to win $18 million, they kept their focus and closed out the game. TI is no stranger to Cinderella stories, but what Spirit did at TI 10 was truly a miracle. What a story, what a road, what a dream here that they've achieved, the Spirit! The CIS region loves Dota, but it had been a decade since they took home the Aegis, and they spent years watching their greatest hope lose and lose again. By bringing Dota's biggest trophy home, Spirit brought their region to its feet like never before. Hell, even the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, issued a congratulatory note from the desk of the f Kremlin. After two years of watching Dota flounder, the unlikeliest roster made us all remember why it's so special. And it's hard to imagine a better way to bring it back. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.